Welcome back. Apart from depleting the purchasing power of the people, the country's currency, which lost more than 200% of its value in the eight years of Buhari, has lost whatever is left of it. Now, consequently, people now struggle to finance the basic needs given that prices have escalated more. Food items, transportation, drugs, and essential products, among others, have become unaffordable owing to the impact of petrol prices. This is happening as income remains static, with 30,000 naira minimum wage and 37.7% unemployment rate, according to KPMG. Across the state, some governors struggle to pay the minimum wage, while others owe several months of salaries and pension arrears. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now on this discourse. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Justin. It oh, is a it is indeed a pleasure. How's the United States uh, today? Well, it's, they have their own economic challenges. <laughs> they are dealing with inflation pressure, also, mm. just like we are dealing with inflation pressure here. Yeah. But again, they have structures that guide against um, affecting their poor of the poor because their credit system is still there to help the vulnerable, comparable to ours. But um, I think they have their, their challenges, especially in fact inflation pressures because cost of goods and services and also energy has gone up here too. But they have um, done something whereby they, you know, they normally pay petroleum tax that have been suspended. So oh. that have brought down the cost of um, living a little bit for their citizens. Okay, wow. You, 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 it's uh, good that we're even starting this way to know that uh, it is not just um, a Nigerian thing. It is a global issue when we talk of uh, uh, global financing and economics. Uh, the United States um, have in its own share of uh, the inflationary issues. Rightly said that uh, they have uh, structures in place. So how come over the time, over the years, uh, we have refused to see these things the way they are and uh, we are not actually working in that light of um, ameliorating the effect on the average Nigerian? I think uh, when you're used to doing things the way you used to do things before, and all of a sudden you need to change it. There's always a challenge. Um, I always tell people change, uh, change is tough at the beginning. It gets messy in the middle, and then towards the end it could be very glorious, gorgeous, because of um, the structure that would have been put in place. Um, we are used to enjoying a lot of things free. Um, in a country like the United States, they don't see anything free. They, they, they say there's no free lunch. In the U.S., there's no free lunch anywhere. But again, uh, we, we don't have the structures. The policies that have been taken are, are good policies, but those policies are taken when you have a good foundation. Uh, once the foundation is good, then you begin to lay down the structures. So what we've seen the government of Nigeria do thus far is to come up with the structure, but the foundation to drive the structure so that it does not affect a lot of vulnerable Nigerians were not in place. So it's now they are trying to fix it those foundations but again if you build a house without a foundation and you're trying to rebuild it we were when you already have uh, maybe the structure of there you know it costs a lot of pain because a lot of them um structure may have to give way for it to to happen so definitely that's what the challenge we are having as a nation it's not because the policies are not right but again they come with a lot of pains a lot of pains Okay, Mohammed, uh, the times are really very hard and Nigerians are feeling the, the impact of it or that they want bearing the brunt. Uh, we have talked about this several times on the show. You know, I asked you at one time if the government is actually biting off more than it can chew with all of the policies coming at the same time, the floating of the Naira, you know, the, the deregulation of um, the downstream sector, specifically for PMS, and Nigerians uh, have had to, you know, suffer all kinds of hardship. Right now, uh, PMS is being sold at about 617 naira, or even higher in some states of the federation. You know, just how can Nigerians cope? Because lots of experts, including yourself, uh, have said that uh, subsidy removal is something that we should have done a long time ago. Definitely, um, subsidies is what we should have done a long time ago, um, which we didn't do. So, like I said in one of your program, it's like you're supposed to have a surgical operation 15 years ago and you didn't do it and you're not doing it now. It will come with more pains. 
So what are we Nigerians supposed to be doing? I think more, more or less Nigerians need to begin to, uh, I've seen a lot of social media jokes on people saying that we're getting more healthy. So we do more of trekking, <laughs> we do more of um, Oman bears are going to become less attractive these days because if you cannot trek to the Oman bear, then you better sit in your house. So, but that's an enlightened about what I think we in Nigeria need to do is to begin to um, also restructure our minds and begin to make sure that we, we do what we ought to do when we have to do it. If it's not necessary to you, for you to be in a place, I don't see any reason why you should be there. And again, it's not just the Nigerian you know, government also need to lead the way. If we continue to see seven convoys of cars in the government entourage, if we continue to see politicians uh, keep living large, them and their families, members, then you are making a mockery of our suffering. So in as much as you lie down to the people to, do, um, to come up with some other strategy, um, now some of people have come up with that strategy. Instead of going to, to office with car now, the, some of them take buses. Those that used to use Uber now, these days no more take Uber. And if they have to take Uber, they also do it jointly with some colleagues to get to the office. So those are, are short-term strategies that they are putting in place. But we need to see the strategy from the government. Mm. The government is, if you're running a government based on capitalism, capitalism is all about wealth creation. And when you talk about wealth creation in capitalism, it might not be equal wealth creation. The rich might keep getting richer, but the poor will not be poorer like they used to be because the rich is, is supposed to provide an environment. I mean, the government is supposed to, to provide the environment whereby the rich has, are, 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 are creating jobs for those people. So it's, it has to be a private driven economy when you talk about uh, capitalism. Capitalism is all about private sector driven economy. So we need to see government come up with policy. We need to see government take a bite also. We need to see government come up with um, a little bit of policy that can help the ordinary Nigerian begin to stand on his feet, not just all about pain, pain, pain. There must be a, a little stable leaning for ordinary Nigerians, especially going forward at a time like this. Okay, Mohammed, uh, going forward, uh, it is hard because uh, I can imagine that uh, Labour and um, the federal government and TUC, they are actually on a, on a discourse for about eight weeks to see how they can actually uh, cushion the effect of all of the subsidy removal that, um, you know, that are plaguing Nigerians as it were. Because right now, salaries have not been increased, transportation costs you know, have more than doubled. Not everyone, you know, have the luxury or has the luxury of uh, joining their colleagues to get to work. Even some colleagues are even charging colleagues, you know, to get to the office because it's that, it's that hard. But the issue right now is that uh, in the wake of all of this, uh, the federal government had talked about palliatives, uh, 8,000 naira, you know, to about 12 million households for about six months. In as much as the federal government has um, suspended it and has talked about um, a review of it all, what should we be doing in the immediacy? Because Nigerians are really suffering. Some of them cannot even afford to get staples to eat. Most of I think uh, it's painful, yes. And again, what should the government be doing immediately? First and foremost, I think the government should begin to look at the civil service. Um, if you are so active to say first subsidy should go in your first inaugural speech, I think you should also be so uh, emotional to say worker salary is reviewed immediately, even if you, you have to go and think about it, because you said this first subsidy uh, going was not on your speech. So you should have well added the improvement for work workers packages on your speech, even if it was not there too. So what I'm saying is that we've seen a government that have shared the highest revenue thus far in the month of July. They say they've shared the highest revenue they've ever shared because NMPC for the first time was able to remit back to the federation account. So we, we see a government that is now growing in terms of financial independence and they have to look at their own people also to make sure that the people also are growing. Now, the first thing, when you talk about palliative, look, I don't believe palliative in salary increment is one of the best palliative. It could be, but there are other palliative that must be structural palliative that people, because when you increase salary, the cost of goods and services have gone up. Sometimes salary is not able to, uh, to, to, to improve commissariate to what is obtained in terms of inflationary pressure. So what I expect the government to do is supposed to be looking at structures, maybe uh, tax holidays for workers for the next two years, those are what labor should be talking about, not just about uh, bringing buses for transportation. After six months, seven months, some of these buses are no more working. They should begin to think about um, um, 
looking at taxes for workers. Let workers stop paying taxes on their salaries. Let, let their taxes just be there for the time, maybe for the next one year to the two years. And also increment in salary, that also will help them be able to drive their consumer. Nigeria is a consumer-driven economy because of our population. So, and once that economy is not governed by buying and selling, the economy is going to start, come to a halt. So they need to begin to do that. Structural changes when it comes to palliative, not just uh, uh, financial changes. So if you do that for two years, remember that I'm saying I'm suspending salary or, or um, taxes on salary doesn't mean that I'm suspending taxes on value-added service. Value-added taxes are still there. So it's a win-win situation for the government. And what they are earning in terms of subsidy removal is not going to be comparable to what they will be paying in terms of, uh, of incrementing salary or taxes. We must come to a, to a place whereby government should begin to take a bite of their revenue. So if I'm in the labor team, I will not just be talking about salary increment. I'll be also be talking of things like that. If you are in grade level 14 or thereabout, you need to be thinking about, okay, what are those other incentives that we can give to them in terms of, 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 of consumer loan? That government will say, okay, you can take consumer loan at a single digit. It's, it's all about something has to give way for something. So the government itself must begin to take a bite of their revenue and begin to think of the people because without the people, there cannot be a government. I heard of um, the MPC meeting, you know, what should we be looking at specifically the Central Bank of Nigeria? Because in my opinion, I think raising the NPR for that would actually worsen uh, the economy because over time, the NPR has been increased and um, it's as though inflation has remained very stubborn. And just you remember, I told you on your programs a while ago that we're treating, we're not, we're treating the symptom instead of dealing with the disease. Um, MP, MPL was not the challenge in Nigeria. It was never a challenge. You know, the challenge was um, exchange rate volatility. And that's why you are seeing the kind of um, pressure you are seeing in terms of um, goods and services. We, you, you don't just copy and paste what you see the American doing. They have structures in place to meditate against impact on the ordinary Nigeria, but we don't have the structures. So MPA, MPA is not the problem. The problem that they need to be tackling is the problem that have to do with the exchange with volatility. How can CBM make sure that we have a stable exchange rate? And the only way they can make sure we have a stable exchange rate is to begin to end, uh, grab earnings into our FX system, mm -hmm. either through uh, uh, foreign direct investors or through diaspora remittance or through sales of crude oil and, 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 and also through trading in the non agric sector. Those are the four areas that we, we, we drive uh, income into our economy. We need to begin to look at those places. What are the, what are the systems we can put in place to improve the drive of effects into our economy so that we have enough liquidity. Floating the Naira does not mean you should not intervene because you cannot just allow your, your currency to market forces. Market forces thrive on volatility. And that is why today the exchange rate is a good place for market forces to strive on because they strive on volatility. Once you bring in stability, then the, then the volatility comes to an end and then you begin to attract the right type of investors. What you attract in terms of volat volatility in your economic are speculators. So, and, and what is driving volatility is because of the lack of liquidity in the system as regards the exchange rate. So the CBN need to tackle that. They need to come up with strategy on how to attract liquidity into the system. And if you do that, you will indirectly be addressing inflationary pressure. Because if you get the Naira to stable at what the Bank of America have said, between 600 and 650, then you have drive down inflation by almost 10%. That is what the CBN should be looking at. And the best way they can look at that is to continue to intervene in the market in the area of liquidity, meet legitimate demand either for manufacturers, for people that are traveling, pay off the airlines that you are owing. So that will drive confidence into your economy. The foreign investors that you are expecting to come to your economy will not come to your economy when there is volatility. They will only want to come when there is stability in the exchange. When they know that the exchange rate is priced rightly, then they will come in. If you don't have it priced rightly, no foreign investor wants to come in at 780 Naira and be exiting at 650 Naira. It is a loss for them. So you must make sure you create that stability and that is the work of the CBN because that is a monetary policy decision that must be taken. Okay, let's still talk about uh, our foreign exchange um, regime. Uh, would you really say we are actually getting it right? Because uh, when they talked about the float of the Naira initially, uh, most people, a school of thought, believed that it's actually the best way to go. But it just seems as if there's a big divide between what we have in the INE window 
and of course at the parallel market. Justin, it happens like that. Uh, that's what I'm talking about volatility. Remember mm. um, when before we come and we came with the IE window. When we came up with the IE window at 300 and I think 350, the volat the market went as high as 500. And then when we were able to meet le uh, legitimate demands, liquidity was in the system. We saw that the, it settled at 360 before we had the COVID uh, destruction, destruction that actually happened in the economy. So it's still the same thing I would say. Uh, we need to attract liquidity. That's why you are seeing those volatilities. It's not because the policy is bad. It's not because the policy will not work. The policy will definitely work in the long run. But we need to begin to look at how can we make this policy work? in the area of um, uh, or area of um, uh, liquidity so we need to to know that the policy will work in the long run but again like you you rightly pointed out it's causing a lot of challenges the, the the difference are there but i can assure you that this difference will not last for too long i believe that the naira will definitely stabilize between 600 to 650 in the long term but in the short term we might see the hovering between 700 and 750. At the time we begin to maintain towards stability, you attract the foreign direct investors and the portfolio investors. And once they start coming in there, you could also see we we'll drive down that uh, volatility in that space. So somebody said, is it the right policy? Yes, it's the right policy, but do we have the right structure to guide to, to, to make sure this policy come out successful? That is what I think the CBN should be working towards. And the only way you can work towards that is if you attract a lot of liquidity into the system. I think you see the right policy. It's still the right policy. We could see that um, with um, a lot of uh, things. If you look at the inflationary pressure, about 23 point something percent, mm. and by and by the exchange rate um, movement of almost 200 um, percent, uh, and you also see the um, the petrol price at almost um, 200 and something percent, then you realize that um, it's not as bad as we thought it would be, even with the removal of subsidy and the floating of the Naira. But I believe in the long term it will be better if we can be able to address this um, little found foundational problem that will help the structure stand strong. All right, Mohammed, as we begin to round off, let's still talk about um, this fuel price because I feel there's a bit of uh, insincerity in some quarters per se because uh, I know uh, the issue of uh, foreign exchange is uh, something that we have to bring to bear. But even before that, uh, I mean, these uh, marketers, they had old stock. All of a sudden, because of uh, the variation in the Forex market sometime last week, uh, they just uh, skyrocketed the price of uh, petrol. No, I don't know. In my lay terms, I would have thought that uh, since they had actually, uh, they are actually selling old stock, they should actually maintain the price until maybe when they get new stock and uh, they have uh, seen or uh, reflected the new price, then it might change. Because all of a sudden, we don't even know what to expect. Uh, right now, we're paying 617 naira. Who knows how much we will pay in the month of August? <laughs> okay. Um, like I said, markets, market forces. When you leave market forces without regulation, then you have a challenge. Uh, we have the downstream regulatory commission. They are mm -hmm. supposed to regulate this. They are yeah. supposed to be those regulating the market. So if what is happening is because there's no regulation, the, the, the regulation does not mean there's no regulation. There should be a flat fixed price of goods and I mean, of petroleum product, especially. It doesn't mean that, oh, when we deregulate, I can come in with my own and sell at 800 Naira or 700 Naira. And all of us can just decide we want to sell at 800. No, it doesn't work like that. So that don't have to do reg regulation work. They are not really doing what they ought to do, I can assure you, because if they are doing what they ought to do, they won't have the problem that we are having as it is as it stands now. So I think regulators are not up to their game. We need to work on that. Um, you see, I said something. I said uh, market forces. Market forces thrive when there's no um, strong structures. Because the structures are not there, things will be done haphazardly. Uh, whether the price will increase next month, remember that they are not telling us exchange volatility. Mm. At the last time, um, crude oil was $75 per barrel, and now it's going to $80. That means in January, where we expect Saudi Arabia to cut down their production, where they are seeing crude move to about $95 or 100 naira per, per barrel, mm. that means we might be buying for almost 1000 something naira if we are not um, beginning to refine on our own. So mm. it still boils down to that issue that is say local refining local refining of petroleum products from a petroleum producing nation like ours is the key to dive down price 
All right, thank you, uh, Mohammed. Just uh, one final word, uh, or word rather, for you know Nigerians because they are actually bearing all of the brunt and. Uh, not everyone can afford to work from home, you know, because uh, the labor policies in their workplaces might not really uh, permit them working from home. They have to go the extra mile, you know, to get to work and to get uh, the daily bread as it is now. So how do they persevere, in your opinion? Just so you are putting me on the line. <laughs> You said it. One thing is that if you have a labor force that is not um, uh, technology compliant, this is a time they need to be technology compliant. Mm. Uh, also, they need to begin to think of increasing the allowances. Uh, maybe transport allowances must be increased for their workers. If you, if you have not increasing the salary yet, mm. you should look at their transport allowance and decide to increase their transport allowance. Right. Uh, I heard um, somebody, I think it was Goldman Akila, be saying that uh, he has increased the transport allowances of his company staffs, of his workers. So, so I think everybody should take a key from that, begin to see how they can in, in, improve upon increment in, in, in that um, regard. And again, um, government must, 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 with a, with a sense of urgency, come up with policy for the ordinary Nigeria. Um, if you tell me what to tell Niger ordinary Nigerian, I've said it, the pain is still going to come. The pain is still there. The pain, we've not seen the end of this pain. I can tell you that we've not seen the end of this pain. But if we get it right, I keep saying it, there is light at the end of the tunnel. All right. It will be a gorgeous end if we get it right because we might see where our economy will pick up for the next 10 years. Mm. We will have stability in virtually every sector of our economy if we are able to get this right. All right, thank you so much, Mokhtar Mohammed. We do appreciate your time. My pleasure, Justin. Always a pleasure. Do you have right. a pleasant day. You too, bro. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.